Hi everyone and welcome to our Touch Base Thursday for September 8th. Um, if you are able to join me and you are live with me, please comment and tell me hello and we will get started here in just a couple of minutes. Um, you guys are in for a treat tonight because I've got lots of fun techniques um, to share with you and so excited to get started um, with all of the awesome things that I want to share. Um, so anyway, um, I'm just going to give it a minute here and make sure that I'm live where I need to be and um, we'll get started again in just two minutes here. All right, so anyway, I'm actually live a couple of minutes early, I just noticed. Um, but anyway, we will wait till exactly 7 o'clock to get started. I guess I was so excited to go live with you that I came on a little early. Hi to Carol and Patty and Philomena, um, Donna, Vicki. All right, here we go. Now we got people popping on. I was starting to get a little concerned there. Uh, all right, so anyway, excited to be going live with you all tonight. I have um, four different techniques I'm going to be showing you, bringing back some old, I call it old school stuff, but I'm excited to be sharing it with you um, because there are some things that I've not done or used in quite a while um, that maybe you haven't used in a while that will give you some inspiration to go back to, to doing some of the fun things that you can do with our stamps, ink, and paper. So anyway, hi to Gail and Courtney. Welcome, ladies, as you're popping on. Um, so anyway, I'm going to make sure here to that I'm do 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 bear with me here there we go now I can see comments better all right anyway so um hope you all had a wonderful Labor Day weekend um I actually I posted on my page most of you know I went and canned tomatoes with my mom and we made some sloppy joe sauce and I apologize a good handful of you asked for that recipe I will share it with you I totally forgot and make a note um, but it is um, a family favorite of ours. And basically how we can it is you just um, fry up the hamburger like you were going to if you were going to make Sloppy Joe's or even like um, taco meat. You just fry up the hamburger, dump in a pint jar of this awesome Sloppy Joe sauce, warm it back up, and you are good to go. So it is awesome, awesome, awesome for um, really quick, quick meals. So um, anyway, yes, I know, Carol, I will give it that to you guys. I just remembered that I didn't share that. So I will. I'll go back to that post and I'll actually put it right in the comments for everyone to have. Um, but that was a fun weekend for my mom, kind of an impromptu last minute. I was offered tomatoes from someone that I work with and I decided to say, Mom, can you help me with this and show me how to do it? Because I didn't have the recipe yet. And went to her house and we actually did some tomato juice as well. We had enough to do some tomato juice. So, um, and that brought back memories. I used to always help my mom can tomato juice. So it was fun. We had a fun weekend, long couple days, but we had a lot of fun with that. So um, anyway, um, Claire went with me. Natalie um, stayed back. She had a hair appointment, you know, priorities with the, that hair. Uh, they weren't able to get her in. Um for a while so she ended up having to keep her appointment but um we had we had a great weekend with her and it was kind of nice to be able to just spur the moment do something like that so anyway um that was what we did um both the girls are now in school claire in high school natalie is fully engulfed and in into her schoolwork and stuff in college so we're starting to get back into our new normal if you want to call it that um but anyway i'm excited for that to kind of have structure again in, in our lives and know what we've got going on each night and all that kind of stuff so anyway um so let me see here that's really all i have in the way of announcements i didn't do much of any oh i designed some classes classes so I posted a sneak peek of my Christmas barn class that I know you're going to love and I've already told um, Jen she's going to have to cut a few extra because I know that one's going to sell it's pretty amazing my wheat class opened up today my gathered wheat class also near and dear um, to my heart um, with my farming background and then my regular three classes have also opened up um, and I posted them yesterday it's the butterfly kisses um, bewitched Halloween class and the boughs of holly so that's what I have right now for you guys, working on some more awesome stuff too. And then we have to do our sharing. So let's do that real quick. Um, and I'm not going to talk as long tonight because I know that my presentation is going to take some time to get through all these techniques to show you what I've created for you. Okay. So anyway, um, our sharing people, thank you all for sharing. Remember we had blends that I was giving away this time. And so the winner of the real red, there's this real red or cherry cobbler. Let me look. Got to see what it is. Cherry cobbler. 
is Carol Koroleski. So congratulations, Carol. Hopefully this, these, this makes up for no longer having tomatoes to make sloppy joe sauce. I saw your comment about not having any tomatoes. I'm going to write down that you have the cherry cobbler because I can't write it on my plastic. And then the winner of the purple ones, which are the Fresh Freesia, is Nancy Snowblind. So congratulations to both of you. Um, for next week, what I'm going to be giving away for all of you is some ribbon. I love this beautiful, soft, succulent um, ribbon. It's the satin ribbon. So we have a bolt of that. And then we have a bolt of the sheer... Um, this is the sheer pool party ribbon. So we will draw winners. <laughs> That's cute, Carol. So we will draw winners for that next week. Okay. A couple other things I have in the way of announcements. Weekly deals. I know I talked about weekly deals last week, but a new set of weekly deals came out today. And I also posted them. You're going to start seeing me posting more things as we get into the fall season. I usually kind of, um, ramp down a little bit on too many posts during the spring or during the summer because we're all into summer mode but you're going to start seeing me post more things now as we approach the fall and winter months to keep you all inspired and creating and crafting right um i will be offering the end of this month the last two weeks of the month um a kit sale so i've got lots of leftover kits from various classes and i'll be offering my kit sale where you get two kits with any $50 order. And what I'll be doing is I'll be posting, I have got a ton of them, a lot more than I thought. Um, we've made a list of all of them and I'm just like going, gosh, these have to go to a good home to be used. So um, I will be um, coming up with a creative uh, web page or something to put those all on so you can see them. Um, first come first serve basis so when that kit sale goes live um, you're going to want to make sure you check it out right away tell me which two kits you want put in your $50 order and I will ship those kits off to you okay so um, be on the lookout for that I do that about twice about twice a year um, where I do my kit sale so you guys will be able to take advantage of um, that so anyway um and hi to Sandy. I see Sandy joined in and to Shelby. Welcome guys, ladies, sorry. Uh, so weekly deals, um, if you are, so my ordering promotion tonight, and I do have my little my little host code and everything here. Anybody who puts in a minimum $30 order, you will receive three of the projects that I'm um, showcasing here tonight and their techniques. And so again, if you put it in order and you can tell me, hey, I want these three cards, if I have them, they're yours. If I don't, you're just going to get three that I've made. So, um, but if I have them and you're one of the first ones to put it in order and you want to tell me which ones you want, I'd be happy to send you them because I think a couple of them might be some fan favorites. So, um, anyway, that is all I have in the way of announcements. Oh, my regular classes have opened up. So, like I said, wheat class has opened up. Um, my bewitched Halloween class, boughs of holly, butterfly kisses. And then I'll have one more that will be opening up the end of the month using the soft seedling stamp set. It's not the cards I'm going to be showcasing tonight because these cards are going to be too hard to offer as a class unless I did some kind of a video because of all the techniques and you'd need to have lots of inks and all that kind of stuff but I am offering a different class focusing on this stamp set I love this stamp set um, and I think it's kind of overlooked in the catalog I know I overlooked it at first it's called soft seedlings it's $20 it's on page 53 of the Stampin' Up! holiday catalog but it's way on the bottom and in just a little graphic about um, four by five it's not like a great big stamp set so um, anyway, um, but that is um, what we're going to be showcasing tonight. So I'm really excited about that. Totally excited about that. Oh, get off there. Okay. Um, anyway, uh, oh, Shireen, you bought the stamp set? Yes, it is a good one. And like I said, it's, it's overlooked, I think. Um, and it's got great sayings, thinking of you, so grateful for you, hello. So anyway, with that, I'm going to transition my camera down and get started a little bit earlier with you all tonight because, like I said, I have lots to share with you. I always, I think, do too much, um, but you're going to love this. I guarantee you, you are going to absolutely love um, all of the presentation tonight and the, the, the techniques and things you're going to be seeing. So with that, I'm going to transition my camera down and let's get started. You're going to see your little sneak peek first. You guys ready for your sneak peek? Woohoo! Okay, so I may have to adjust the cards a little bit, but here's your sneak peek. 
Lots and lots of technique going on there. Can you guys see some of that? Isn't that pretty good? Um, I know you're not able to see all of them just yet, but here, you, now you can kind of get a better sneak peek. Let me turn my computer so that I can see your guys' comments here. And then we're going to go ahead and get started. All right. Woohoo. All right. So which one do we want to start with first? Now, tonight I am going to need to bring in some grid paper because we are going to be making a great big mess. I'm also going to be putting here for you, um, thank you, Gail, my host code. So again, anybody who puts in a minimum $30 order, you will receive um, three of the cards that I'm showcasing tonight, um, already done, made for you to just be able to send out to whomever you may want to send them to. Um, $30 order, you receive three of them. Order has to go in by 8 p.m. Sunday night. Um, you just go to my website. This is the host code. Now, if you don't want to write the host code down right now, you can just go to my website and the host code is actually out there um, for you to just see right there on my, on my main homepage, okay? All right, so let's get started. We're gonna be doing some heat embossing and all kinds of fun stuff with you guys here. I need to straighten my grid paper though or it's gonna drive me crazy. I'm kind of weird that way. All right, bear with me here. Okay, that's better at least. So the first one that we are going to be showcasing or I'm gonna be showcasing for you tonight is using what is called the technique of emboss resist. How many of you have done emboss resist before? Um, you're probably thinking I might have, but I'm not sure. So we are going to make this card. And I'm going to show you um, emboss resist. Okay, so you can see how these beautiful um, uh, um, leaves um, come up. Now, first of all, before we I do anything, I'm going to tell you the supplies that I used. So for the card base, I used my um, uh, soft suede. Then I used a mat that is the um, soft sea foam. And then I have another one that's a quarter of an inch smaller that is my crumb cake. So five and a quarter by four, and then five by three and three fourths. And then I have my vanilla that is four and three fourths by three and a half. This is the piece we're going to be working on to make it look like this. Oh, Courtney, you have? Yes, isn't it awesome? And then, of course, we have our little piece here to do our, our greeting at the very, very end. Okay, so I'm going to move the card out of the way up here to the side for a minute in the corner so we have time to work with this one. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to... Oh, let me actually show you the stamp set again so you guys can see it up closer. This is the Soft Seedling stamp set. Um, great sayings for all of your, you know, um, fall needs. You have this great big leaf, which is what I'm featuring on all of my cards tonight. And then you also have um, the little seedling stamp right here off on the side. Okay, $20, best $20 that you could ever per, um, spend. Now, the other thing I'm going to be using tonight is our toolkit. This is $27. Um, and this toolkit comes with this awesome tray for using embossing powder. It comes with this little um, brush to be able to brush it all back in. I didn't clean mine out yet because I'm going to be doing um, using it a lot tonight for a couple different cards. It comes with these little tweezers for you to be able to hang on to your piece. So, so many times we would hang on to it like this and then heat emboss, but now you can hang on to it with these little tweezers, which makes it really, really nice. And then it also comes with an embossing buddy. And so we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how this is used as well, okay? So, um, $27, those dimensional backings get everywhere. Great investment. All right, so the first thing we're going to do before you heat emboss anything, you want to um, run the um, embossing buddy over top of it. This just removes any of the static, any of the dirt, and helps the embossing powder stick where you really want it to stick. Now, you're also going to need to invest in a Versamark ink pad if you don't already have one. Um, Versamark ink is the magic behind heat embossing. And yes, I broke open a brand new one um, for making my card. And then um, what you're going to also need to have is clear embossing powder, okay? So, and you're going to see me, the, I think this comes in the neutral pack with clear and white and black and maybe another one, but we're going to be using the clear. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be, and this is like a sticky ink, and I'm just going to be inking up my, my um, leaf here. And I'm just going to stamp it in three different places. Now, you're not going to be able to see where I'm stamping this. I will pick it up and show you where it's stamped before I do the heat embossing on it so that you'll be able to see um, it on there. 
Um, but you're just going to kind of, and you don't want to overlap this. You don't want to overlap your images. So I'm hoping I didn't. Usually I pick it up and look at it. Because you can kind of see, oh, I did good. You can kind of see where it's at on there. Maybe you, I'm not sure if you guys can. But with the light and stuff, you can kind of tell where you, um, where you've um, put that um, stamped image. And then the final one I'm going to do is down here on the bottom like this. And they're all going to look a little bit different, okay? Now I'm going to put my um, cover on my Versamark because I do not want to have um, powder in there. And I'm going to bring in my tray here of for the embossing um, powder. And I'm just going to open up my clear embossing powder here. And all I'm going to do is dump some clear embossing powder on top of this. And that powder is going to stick to those stamped images, okay? And you want to make sure that you get them on all of the little areas. So it's kind of nice to just, and usually if you're embossing with like black or a different color, you can easily tell where you have it and where it's not. Um, but I want to make sure I have good coverage on this. So you can kind of see, I'm going to bring it up to the camera close. You can kind of see where those three leaves are, right? I'm hoping that you guys can kind of see the powder on that. I'm now going to move this out of the way, but we're going to be using it again. So I don't want to take it completely too far out of the way. And I am going to now turn on my heat gun. This is my heat gun. And I'm stuck with my cord only going so far. So I'm hopeful that um, one, you guys can hear me. And two, that I can do this on camera. But what you're gonna do, and I'm gonna hang on to this with my tweezers, is you are going to heat emboss, or heat this powder up, and it will turn to like a melt. Let me bring it up a little bit further into the camera. Once it starts to melt, I just move my paper around, or you can move the gun around. In this case, I need to move my paper around because I, my cord is limited. I should have moved my whole presentation down just a bit. Can you see it changing to like that gloss? That's what you want it to do. You want it to turn to a gloss, and that means that it has melted that powder. And then we're gonna do this one. So that's the neat thing now. You don't have to worry about hanging on to this with your with your fingers because that's what this little tool is for. Can you guys see that kind of melting? It just melts that powder. And yep, you're gonna wanna let this cool for just a bit. So here we go. And I may not actually assemble the complete card because you guys know how to do that. So I might just more focus on the technique. We'll see how we do time-wise here. I missed a little bit right there and I missed a little bit down here so you're just going to kind of want to move it around at different angles so that you make sure that you have all that heat embossed all right I hope you guys were still able to hear me through that but can you see how it's all nice and shiny now that is what heat embossing does and you can do it in so many different colors all right now what we're going to do is the fun part so the colors of ink that I chose to use on this is um, I chose to use the soft sea foam and I thought I used crumb cake. I may have to go get my crumb cake. I may have put it back. Oh, here it is. Okay. And then I used some sponge daubers. It is very satisfying doing that. I agree there, Courtney. Okay, I need to find which ones are for what colors here. So let me just make sure I find them here. Because I have sponge daubers going like crazy. Oh, for this one I used my sponges. Sorry, for this one I used sponges, not my sponge daubers. Why? I'm not sure, but I did. Okay, so we're going to do the green and this one. So then what I did is I just went into my ink pad and I just made little circular areas here and there with the different colors, okay? So you can see here I'm adding, and the neat thing is with the emboss resist technique, this ink is not going to stick on top of those um, those leaves because they're, they, a little bit does go in between it, but not like it normally would. And this is where I, I why I use my, my sponges. You could also use your blending brushes, um, but I just have a little bit better control and can push a little bit harder using my um, my sponges. And you're going to cover this entire piece. I'm so sorry um, that this is um, moving a little bit. Marcia, it is the clear embossing powder that I used. So clear embossing powder. Now, you could also use white and give it a little bit of a different look. So you could if you wanted to. 
um, but I just chose to use, and a little bit of that green goes a long way. Can you see that? So that's why I'm really filling this in with the crumb cake. Um, now it doesn't matter, you can see on my sample, I also stamped some of the little seedlings on there. And I could have done that ahead of time or I could have done it um, after. I chose to do it after. So I am going to bring in my um, soft suede for that. And then what I did is I just used the little seedling, um, the little seedling here and stamped some of the little seedlings onto the space where Wherever you want it, wherever it will fit, here and there, little little pieces. And I'll just do those three for this one. Isn't that neat? Thank you, Sarah. I know, it's right. I, these are all things that are really hard to teach and do in classes unless you have a lot of extra time, but they're neat to kind of be able to show. Now, if you wanted to, like I don't have a whole lot of ink on, um, oh, I have a little spot missing. I don't like that. You gotta get that all filled in. What you could do is you could take like a Kleenex or a baby wipe or something and wipe off any ink residue on top of this, but there really isn't any. Sometimes a little bit of ink might stick to that. But look at that amazing technique. Now you could have, I could have chosen to do this in any colors. Um, I could have done it in Cajun craze. I could have done it in, but can you imagine the different things that you can do with this kind of a technique with different stamp sets? So then from there, all I did was layered it onto all of the different colors that I used in the card. Again, layering, layering, layering. Now, when you see this piece that I worked on, you can tell it's kind of wrinkled and kind of, um, it will settle back down. It's from it being heated up. Um, but I do find that when you do heat embossing on things, um, I do like to use a little bit more adhesive. And I'm going around all four corners on that, um, all around the outer perimeter, because I do want this to stick really, really good. Um, so I do use a little bit more adhesive on this. Okay, but it will lay flat. Um, you can see this one lays, is laying nice and flat. So it will lay flat for you. Um, it just takes a little bit of time for it to do that. Um, and then I layered it on top of the soft sea foam. And then finally, my card base was soft suede. So you can see I really incorporated all those colors into this. And then the final thing I did was type or did my thinking of you. Um, and I meant to put some, grab some embellishments to put on these cards, and I totally forgot when I got them done. Um, but you could easily um, add you know embellishments to these as, if you wanted to as well the final thing is stamping my thinking of you and so we are going to do that thank you kit and hi Peggy and welcome welcome so tonight I am showcasing lots of different techniques this one is referred to as the um, uh, emboss resist technique and one that I haven't done in a very long time um, so there's my thinking of you let me grab my scissors so and I'm just going to cut this off at an angle. Hi, Pat. Oh, hi, Diana. It, it's okay. That's the neat thing. You can always go back and watch the replay. That's what's awesome about these Facebook Lives, right? Um, and then I'm just going to add a couple dimensionals on here. And voila, you have a finished card using the emboss resist technique. Isn't that gorgeous? Love it. Thank you. Oh, I love all the hearts. You guys are so awesome. So yeah, so that is my first technique that I want to share with you. While I have the heat gun out, I'm going to showcase the second card. Um, thank you, Paula. I love it too. I'm going to showcase the second card that I, I created using embossing powder, and it's also the clear embossing powder. So if you don't have embossing powders, you could easily purchase the soft seedling stamp set and your embossing powders, and you'd be able to get some of these cards for free tonight sent to you, right? Okay. So the next card I'm going to share with you is this one right here. Is that not gorgeous? This is probably my favorite one that I'm sharing with you tonight. And this one, um, I don't really know what the technique is called, but it makes the, the, um, the leaf look like it is wet or that it's got like a mist or a dew on it. And I love it. And so this one is where we stamp on vellum and then use some clear embossing powder to make it look like it's kind of wet. So I'm gonna move that one up to the corner 
And I'm gonna tell you guys first all the different um, parts and pieces that I used on this card. Sorry, the background's gonna be really, really messy, but it's gonna be really, really messy. Okay, I also, again, stuck with my soft suede. Thank you, Marsha. And then I have a layer of cherry cobbler, a layer of sweet sorbet, and then a layer of the um, very vanilla. So these are all, thank you, Courtney. These are all cut a quarter of an inch different. So five and a quarter by four, five by three and three fourths, four and three fourths by three and a half. And then I cut a piece of vellum the exact same size as my final piece. So it's four and three fourths by three and a half. Okay, we're gonna be doing our stamping on our vellum. And then I literally just layered, okay? So for this one, let me clean off my stamp. I do have my um, cleaning cloth here because we're gonna be doing a lot of awesome, fun things with this right here. So for this one, I'm going to be using, I gotta close some ink pads, ladies, so one sec. Otherwise, I'm not gonna be able to have the space to, oh, we need soft suede. And Versamark can go over there, although I don't need Versamark for this one. Um, and then I'm going to be using Sweet Sorbet. And I'm also going to be using Cherry Cobbler, okay? So those are my three ink pads that I'm going to be using. And let me just line these up here so I have them when I need them that I don't need for right now. Okay, I think I'm organized. Woohoo, we ready? All right, so for this one, what I did is I inked up the entire stamp with my soft suede. Now here's where again, you can get very creative and use many different colors that you have that you can think of that you wanna use for fall. Okay, so this one, I'm just gonna ink this up really, really good. Now you're gonna notice it's not a bunch of ink in the middle. That is the design of the stamp set. So don't think that that is an issue with your stamping. Um, you can see that is the design of the stamp set itself, okay? And then I used sponge daubers. So let me find my sponge daubers here. I think that's this one. And not that one, that one's my... Here we go, so that is my sweet sorbet. So what I did then, after I stamped this all up in my soft suede, I went into my cherry cobbler, and what I did is around the outer edges, I inked some cherry cobbler on this. Now, because I didn't wanna ruin my ink pad, I did kinda of dab off any of that soft suede that I bring up with it when I do this, okay? But I'm just gonna ink around the edges here, and dab off what I don't want. This is so fun. And each one is going to look a little bit different. And I'm gonna do this one down here. And this one right here. Okay, so that is my cherry cobbler. Next, I'm going to bring in my sweet sorbet. And I'm gonna do inside here, I want this to be more of my lighter color. You can see right here, it's where I did my lighter color and again, Cleaning that off, because you don't get a ton of ink on it, but you don't want it to be too, too messy and ruin your ink pad. And then I just did a little bit in the centers of my little seeds here. Isn't that fun? Okay, so that's what I did, all right? Now, because that ink's been sitting there for a little bit, you gotta do the half the huff technique. You just take the stamp up by your mouth and you go, can you breathe on it? And that then kind of re-moistens it all. And I'm gonna stamp this down right in the middle of my piece of vellum. So I'm stamping on the vellum. You can see here the vellum that I adhere down to my very vanilla piece. And you wanna leave this here for a little bit because it's not going to dry right away. That's how we were able to get that embossing look on it. Oh, look at how pretty that is. Okay. Now, if you wanted to just let this dry on its own, you could set it to the side. It takes a quite a while for it to dry, but I wanted to give it that wet look. So I am just going to put some of this clear embossing powder over it. It's a little trick of the trade of how I do that. Okay, I'm just gonna kind of tap off the excess. Gorgeous, right? Let me get that out of the way again. Don't wanna be spilling that. Oh, thank you, Philomena. I love this card too, it's my favorite. And then we're gonna heat set that again using our heat gun. 
Um, and let me find my little tool here to pull on. Hang on to this. Oops. So I'm going to apologize if you guys aren't going to be able to hear me very good for a second. But you're going to see this melt as well. And it gives it that wet look. And it makes it dry a heck of a lot faster. Can you guys see that turning? Oh, gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And again, you want to make sure you get all of it. And you want to keep moving with your heat tool. Because if you don't keep moving, you could burn that vellum. Okay. Can you guys see the shine? Let me turn this off. All right, can you guys see the shine on that? Look at how pretty that is. So it gives it that wet, dew look. And look at how the colors just come shining right through on that. Isn't that awesome? All right, so then where it really comes to life is when you put the white or the vanilla behind it. That is why I cut this the exact same size. And I'm just going to use glue dots on all four corners to adhere this down to my very vanilla piece. Isn't that awesome? Uh, Shireen writes, awesome. Yes, I agree. It's awesome. Um, but can you imagine the, the possibilities of the different colors that you could do with this? Um, you could do so many different kinds of cards with it um, and colors for the fall season. So that's why I said this stamp set is a must-have because you can really get creative with um, the different techniques and the different things um, that you can do. Oh, thank you, Peggy. Like I said, this is a really um, uh, different time, I mean, different class for me. I'm like, I'm teaching them techniques this time. So I hope that you guys like it, because if you do, I'll definitely, um, I can definitely do more of these for you guys. So, um, there we go. Now, again, this is um, going to be kind of up and funky, but you can see it lays nice and flat after a while. I know, doesn't that awesome? And it even comes more to life when you add the colors that you used. So again, remember the colors that I used were Cherry Cobbler, Sweet Sorbet, and Soft Suede. So I put this behind a layer of the Sweet Sorbet. And then I added this um, behind a layer of, you guessed it, cherry cobbler. Cherry cobbler. Oops, there's a little piece there that I didn't get. Oh, yeah, I did. So this is then going to go on cherry cobbler. And then the final um, card base. Oh, I added ribbon to this one. So this one I did add some ribbon around here. Um, so we're just going to add, this is the, the, the vanilla woven ribbon that is part of the um, Bows of Holly product suite, but I thought it paired nicely with this. And this card I thought just needed a little bit of ribbon um, to put down here on the bottom. Thank you, Gail. I do too. And I'm glad that you guys are enjoying this because these were fun to make. These were like really fun to make. So um, um, Shireen, who was watching, had actually and I were messaging on Facebook when I was creating these. So she got a sneak peek of some of these and um, she loved them right then and there, too. So I'm glad she's still watching tonight because she got to see, um, not me make them, but she got to see the finished cards. So um, anyway, uh, it's kind of fun to get everyone's reaction when I do what I do that. So make sure people like what I do. Okay. And I'm just going to trim off these um, angles or these little ends here. And you can see that the colors look pretty similar, don't they? I mean look pretty similar. Oh, and then I forgot to stamp the So Grateful. I'm not going to stamp it right now because I'd have to bring out my heat tool and move the ribbon, but I did the So Grateful the same way. So I stamped it with the um, Cherry Cobbler ink, and then I added the heat embossed powder to that as well. So you can see that that did the exact same thing because it doesn't dry right away on your piece of vellum. Oh, thank you, Pat. You're so sweet. And then, like I said, this whole one is going to be put onto a um, soft suede. And again, those are the three inks that um, those are the three inks that we use to do the flower. And it just kind of gives it that do look that I think is so cool. All right, so we're just going to add that on. The final pop is right here. And ta-da! Let me bring in my final card so you can see it again. But isn't that beautiful? Just 
gorgeous. Thank you, Luann. I'm telling you, these cards were so fun to do. All right, so those are the only two that I did that re involve the heat embossing, but I wanted to get them out of the way so I can move the embossing powder and my gun so that I don't make a mess with that again. Um, get all that stuff out of the way. So if you don't have that toolkit, I really encourage you um, to do that as to get that as well. This right here has saved my fingernails. I have melted my acrylic nails before, literally um, by hanging onto it. And it gets really, really hot and then it gets kind of smelly, like acrylic. Yeah, not, not good. <laughs> all right, so those are my first two cards that I wanted to share with you. Okay, let me see what's next on my pile. Now it's on my pile. Okay. Now this may not be for everyone, but I'm going to show it. It's this one right here. And this one um, is just showcasing a, a different way in which you can use our blocks. Okay. So you can see here, I use the colors of Mary Merlot, crushed curry, and pumpkin pie. Okay. And, I'm, and then I had Very Vanilla. So I'm just going to bring in my Very Vanilla piece to get started with on this one. All right. Now, what you can do with this, let me actually get my different inks out. So I gotta put away my three from previous. You guys should see all of the rainbow of colors I have here. It's quite a few of them. <laughs> all right, but I'm weird that way. I've gotta close up my ink pads if I'm not using them. Otherwise, I'm afraid I'm gonna make a mess. I don't wanna do that. Okay, so for this, this one, I used Mary Merlot. I used um, crushed curry and I use pumpkin pie. Yes, I just got my nails done this last, um, yesterday. Oh, look at my burn mark from doing my canning of my tomatoes as well. Um, and when I told him that I wanted a maroon color, didn't know he was going to put the leaves on, but I went, how fitting for my Facebook live that he added the leaves. All right. I do need to clean off my stamp on my icky, messy, um, my, my messy, uh, she am here. Okay. All right. We're ready. So for this one, I use the clear block right here and I'm just going to ink up the clear block with some of these um, ink colors. Oh, I also used, I also used, um, did I put that one away? I did. I need to go run and get my, mo my mossy meadow. So one second, everyone. Okay, had to go get Mossy Meadow. <clears throat> All right, forgot that I used that in the middle here on this card. You see that there? Okay, so what I did is I just inked up part of this block. My block is dirty, so it might give you a few little weird marks. But I inked up part of the block with um, my crushed curry, okay? And it's okay if it's not completely on there the greatest. And then I inked up my other end with... Oh, it's actually a Cajun craze. I don't need pumpkin pie. I really do know my colors. I really, really do. Okay. And then we're going to ink up the other end with Cajun craze. You can see I left a little bit of an opening right there in the middle. And then for the um, mossy meadow, I just used a sponge dauber and I inked up the middle of it. Just to kind of save me a little bit of hassle there. All right. And all you're going to do is huff on this and then stamp it across. And it's designed to give you a weird, unique look. So I don't want you to look at that and go, ew. It's designed to do that. Okay. So in mine didn't stamp the greatest in the middle. So maybe I'll just try to do that again. Because why not? Oh, well, you get the gist of it, um, but you stamp it on there. And then what you want to do is you want to stamp your leaf in a darker color so that it shows up on top. OK, so let me bring this back in so you guys can see. So I'm going to be using my Mary Merlot for the stamp. And again, you can get creative with that block. You can use different sizes of blocks. You can do anything that you want with it. I'm going to move this one over a little bit further since um, it didn't stamp the greatest in the middle and it will take up some of that space. There we go. All right. And then the final thing I did, I'm going to tell you how I did the speckles as well. I stamped the So Grateful using the Mary Merlot as well. 
down here on the bottom. You could also stamp that on the top. Then what I did, I'm gonna close my ink pads because I don't want to get them dirty. This is kind of a messy step, but I'm gonna show you how I got those splatters on there, okay? So here's how I did those splatters. So what I did is I took my Mary Merlot ink and I put a few drops of ink onto a block. This will wipe right off. This is the actual ink that I used when I created these cards, okay? I then put water in one of my blender pens and I'm just gonna add, and you're gonna wanna make sure you have an old shirt on when you do this. I'm gonna add a little bit of water to this. So you just drop it on there. You don't need a bunch. Just a little bit of water, mix it up with that. And then all you're gonna do is just kind of splatter this onto your card. So you can see I'm just hitting it on my, on my finger. And it's okay, you can see I got a little bit of water down there, no biggie, it'll dry, it'll be fine. It's part of the technique look. You're just gonna kind of splatter this on there wherever you'd like it to go. So you could, if you wanted to make a lot of these cards, you could just keep using the same thing over and over and over again, which makes it really, really nice. I'm just gonna cover this up. Now that's gonna take a minute to dry and I am going to dab that off there. But you can see that happened on this card here as well. You can see it kind of smeared a little bit, but it's okay, it's all part of the look. All right, but look at how pretty that is. And then from there, all I did, so that is gonna take a little bit of time to dry because I have water in that, okay? But, um, and instead of using the Cajun Craze, I wanted to make it look a little bit brighter. So I did use the pumpkin pie um, inside of that as one of the layers. So I just layered, again, lots of layers. My card base is Mary Merlot. And then I have crushed curry, the five and a quarter by four five by three and three fourths is my pumpkin pie. And then I'm just gonna add the adhesive onto this so I don't have to turn this over so that I can very, very carefully put this on here like that. And then this whole piece will get layered onto my card base, which is my Mary Merlot. And then again, I'm just gonna put the adhesive on here so this is just kind of like a messy look card. Um, and again, you can use any size block that you would like to do for that. I agree, Peggy, when messy is beautiful, it's worth it. So, and I think this is a very pretty card as well. Now this technique might not be for everyone and normally that would be colored in a little bit better. I'm not sure why it didn't because I did use my mat underneath of here. Um, and then what I did is I added again, a little knot of that ribbon. So I'm just gonna make a little knot here. And I added that down by the stem of the stamp set. So I'm just going to bring this down to the end. Cut that at an angle and cut this one at an angle. Isn't that neat? So again, just a different way of getting a background onto your, your card. And then this I adhered down with a glue dot. right onto this and voila and that awesome oh i could have you're right put the ribbon right up there that would have been cool good idea carol but anyway i think you guys get the idea how quick and simple that is to do but again you're going to want to make sure that you wear an old an old shirt because you know that splatter it does kind of you can see it's all over my piece of paper oh thanks you guys you guys look at all those hearts i love it i love it love it all right, so that is my next technique that I wanted to share with you all. All right, so that's three of them. I've got two left. One of them's not really a technique though. So um, one of them's just a regular card, but I thought if I didn't get to it, I'd at least just show you it. Um, but let me again, put my ink pads away and reset for my next card here. All right, so my next card, where is my next card? Oh, here we go. Is simple and easy. Simple, simple. Oh, you guys, look at all those hearts. Yay, I'm glad that you like this. I'm gonna love this. Okay, so um, Marsha, this mat I just got on Amazon and it is, it's similar to our Stampin' Mat. It's just a great big one. And I just call, I think I called it a Stampin' Mat, but it's bigger and it fits our grid paper. I don't really know what the name of it is, but I did get it on Amazon. I love it because it's bigger. and It's easier for me to be able to do techniques and not have to have the ink and not on with where I'm at and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so for this one, I am using the pumpkin pie. 
This one's just a simple technique, similar to what I did with the previous one. I just used a lot more colors and I actually kind of was very um, strategic in where my colors went, okay? So for this one, I used um, uh, the cage or the Cajun, oh, Cajun craze, that's what I need to, I used four colors. I used pumpkin pie, mossy meadow, um, Cajun craze, and then crushed curry, okay? Now I need to clean off my stamp again. <laughs> Sarah, that's funny. I was the same way. I When I first saw the stamp set, so when I first saw the holiday catalog, I'm a leaf person. I love leaves. So I was a little bummed that there wasn't anything leaves. And I totally overlooked this one. I'm like, oh, that's the only leaf in there. And I, I think I saw a card. There's a website that is just for demonstrators. And somebody created a card with it. And I fell in love with it. And so I bought it. And then I'm like, you know, I remember when I first started as a demonstrator, gosh, 12 years ago, um, these are some of the techniques that I, I learned from a class that I went to using a fall leaf set. And so I just kind of went back to basics and decided to kind of show them again to all of you. So, all right. So for this one, I am um, indeed going to be using some sponge daubers. Now, when you're doing a card like this, you always wanna start with your lightest color that you stamp up the entire stamp with. So I would not wanna use Cajun Craze for this and then try to incorporate it in yellow. I, you know, My lightest color out of these four is the crushed curry. So I'm gonna stamp the entire thing. Let me get that out of there. <laughs> Courtney, I'm glad I'm an enabler. I'm glad I'm enabling you to get this stamp set. Okay, so I am just putting crushed curry on there, okay? And I'm gonna move my, before I stamp, I'm going to, um, I'm going to um, do my sponging. So for this, let me find my, um, so this is my pumpkin pie one. I got them all mixed up here. This is my one for the green. And then Cajun Craze. Where's my Cajun Craze? Mm -hmm. Gotta find my Cajun Craze. It is here, I know it is here. All right, well, we're gonna use this one and pretend it's Cajun Craze. I'm getting as much of the red out as I can off the camera, because I may have actually used two of them for the red. Okay, that's gonna be my Cajun Craze, because I'm not gonna be using much of it. Okay, so I'm um, actually, it's not a prize for bingo, because it's not, I wish they had dyes with it. If they had dyes with it, it would so be, um, so much be a prize. All right, so for this, I am just going to um, do some sporadic um, coloring or dotting of the different colors. So I'm going into the pumpkin pie, and I'm just going to add a little bit of pumpkin pie to this, kind of wherever you want to add it. Um, and then I'm going to add strategically the mossy meadow just to the stem. So you can see I'm just going to stamp up the stem here the best I can. It's okay if it goes over onto those seeds a little bit. I really don't mind. And then we're going to do some of the Cajun craze on the tips. I really like those tips being a darker color. So I'm just gonna do some Cajun craze along those tips. And I left the seeds um, yellow, but this time I'm gonna add just a little bit of the Cajun craze to it. Um, adding again some more of that Cajun craze to the tips. And maybe I'll add just a smudge more pumpkin pie Maybe just a little bit. Okay, so again, can you see what, how much fun you can have with, with that? Um, I'm gonna move my inks out of the way. I will close them up in just a bit. Um, Peggy, the embossing folder, so yes. Let me stamp this first and then I'll bring the embossing folder in and show you what I did. Because I probably won't do it on the sample that I'm making with you tonight, but I will tell you which embossing folder that is. So again, we need to huff this to kind of re-moisten it, okay? And then we're going to put this off to the side and hopefully we get a pretty stamped image. Hopefully, oh, beautiful. I may have actually done more. Maybe I may have even add some Merlot to that. But anyway, again, you can see the different colors that you get by just incorporating some of that sponging. Um, see that little bit of Cajun craze I put on there compared to the all yellow. Now the embossing folder that I used on this, so what I did then is I put this in the embossing folder. Um, this one is the, oh gosh, I wish they had the names on it. It is called, I will find it, it's in the um, holiday catalog. 
But what I did is I only embossed the end of it. So I put it through the embossing folder like this so that I only got my embossed image um, on this little part right here, okay? Let me see if I can, I'll, yeah, I'll find it here in just a couple seconds. Um, and then what I did, but it's in the um, holiday catalog and it's kind of hidden in there, it really is. Um, and then I stamped my So Grateful down here on the bottom. So I do need to clean that off because it's messy from my previous, um, oh, there it is. I'm like, where did I put my cleaning cloth? All right. <clears throat> so I'm looking through the catalog real quick as well. And I just found it here. Let me show you guys it. So if I would have looked right above, it's right on the same page. Um, with the soft seedling stamp set and it's called leaf fall. Thank you, Sabina. So it's right up here in the very top. Oops, sorry, you guys can't see that I'm off camera. Um, so it's right up there and it's kind of hidden. So, um, but that is what I use. And see how this is such a small little, um, small little set there. It's, so that's why it's overlooked, I think. Okay, and then we're gonna stamp our So Grateful and we are going to use, I'm gonna use the Cajun Craze. And I'm just gonna stamp the So Grateful down here like that and then you can see I added another one of those um, little bows to it to the little knots and then I brought in some of the colors that I used on my stamping so I use Cajun craze this is five by three and three fourths this is five and a quarter by four and um, and then I put it um, and secured it onto a piece of the um, crushed curry cardstock for the card base Ta -da. Okay, so this one I'm not embossing, but like I said, that one I did. I just ran it through, um, only doing part of it, which that way it didn't kind of affect the flower. But you still had some more falling leaves on it. And then the final thing that I did here was, doesn't that just pop it? Layers, 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 layers. All right, I tied a little knot here on this. And I'm gonna push it down so I don't waste any of it or waste minimally. And then gonna cut this at an angle. Ta -da, ta -da. There we go. And then this is just gonna get adhered down with some glue dots. It does pop. It's just so pretty and so simple. So this is where, like I said, you can, you know, get out your greens, get out your, you know, I just put some of my favorite fall colors that I liked and went with it, but you could do so many other ones. But there you have it. All right, pretty, right? Just makes it pop. So, and I do think on my sample, I did use some of the Mary Merlot as well, but this one I didn't. But again, it still looks really, really pretty. And then uh, the only thing I meant to do on these cards before and I didn't was add like maybe some little rhinestones or even the rustic um, gems that we have or something and add a couple sporadically here and there to the card. Um, isn't that awesome? Thank you, Sandy. So yeah. Okay. I do have time, I think, for my last card. I am moving right along on these. Now my last card really isn't a technique, but I wanted to take it back to the basics. So when you are struggling with trying to figure out what to do with a stamp set. So when I first saw the the stamp set I was like nah, I don't know it's not my favorite I'm not sure I'm gonna like it but look at the samples that they that they give you in the catalog okay so this one right here is pretty much a copy from the catalog can you see that right there now the only thing that they may have done differently is they may have stamped off with the stamp before they stamped onto their cardstock to make it a little bit lighter um, but when in doubt don't ever hesitate to case the catalog the only thing I added different to this card because I'm a layering person is I pulled in, um, I put it on a, um, I didn't have it on the um, old olive card base. I put it on, uh, to make it pop, I put it on the pumpkin pie, okay? But again, that is a straight out case, similar, close to, of the catalog. And so that's kind of why I wanted to show you guys that, that it's okay to do that. Um, that is why Stampin' Up! puts those in here. Um, is for you to be able to case. So I'm not gonna actually go through making this because you guys know how to do it. Um, but what I did is on the background of this, I stamped around the outer edges. I stamped with that seedling stamp set, which is this one right here. It's old olive stamped onto old olive. Um, and then I stamped the leaf three times, once in pumpkin pie, once in old olive, once in the um, um, 
uh, crumb cake. <laughs> I was at a loss for colors there. And then this is on with dimensionals. I added my thinking of you, a little strip of that white ribbon underneath of there, that vanilla ribbon. And you have a really adorable, simple card, right cased from the catalog. Um, but in lieu of time, I'm not gonna actually put that one together with you. Now, I do wanna bring in all of the cards um, because I do have one surprise. I hope Courtney is still here with me. So when I, um, when I was designing these cards, I realized, let me grab something real quick. I realized that, I did, well I didn't realize it until I went to design these cards, that somebody purchased two stamp sets and someone slightly used the second one, i.e. me, just for the greetings. But this one is the one I've used for my presentation tonight. So I'm going to be giving away the soft seedlings stamp set that I bought duplicate of by mistake to one lucky winner. All you need to do is comment here and um, let me know which card is your favorite. Okay, so I'm gonna bring them all back in. And then the other thing I would love for you to do if you haven't yet is to share my video with a couple of your Stamping Up friends to help grow my, my group and to help grow my, um, my um, online viewers a little bit as well, okay? So I'm only gonna show the four techniques. I'm not even gonna worry about the other one because that one's just a case from the catalog. So you have, and you can just write these down any way that you would like to. Um, you can just say, I like the, 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 um, the leaf with the, the speckled background, or I like the, the one that you did with the white, you know, however you wanna tell me. Um, anybody who, like I said, tells me their favorite card, just write in the comments. Um, um, your name will go in a drawing next week and one of you will win that stamp set because I don't need two of them, right? I just don't need two of them. Okay, um, but I hope that you guys enjoyed. Look, I love all the comments coming in. I love giving away things. Um, so anyway, let me bring this one up because that one's a little bit of a better one. Um, but those are my four cards. Let me make sure you guys can see it that I, I am created tonight for you. Maybe you guys, I don't know, I might be zoomed in a little bit too much. Hopefully you can see them good enough um to be able to see which one oh, i love all your comments so yes make sure you come back next week so at the very beginning of my facebook live when i do my um my sharing and give away those two bolts of ribbon i will also have a name drawn for someone to win that second seedling stamp set again keeping in mind that i i did use i did use um a couple of the greetings and didn't know that i had it and bought it again so um, you'll get the one that is slightly used, but not bad. You can, it's still usable, right? All right. Thank you all so very much for joining me tonight um, for this special presentation of my techniques. Again, um, if you would like to receive three of these cards sent to you already done, um, simply place an online order now through Sunday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, your order only needs to be $30 and this is the host code right here it's also the host code is also on my um my blog on my website kimsbasementbunch.com i thought about doing a, a local class with them debbie if i have enough interest i just might because it has been fun and it'd be great to have all of all of my attendees do these as well so thank you all so very much for joining me tonight i appreciate all of the 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 hearts and that all of you um are watching me tonight as i showcased some neat techniques that you can do with this awesome stamp set all right have a great weekend everyone a great week again you're going to start seeing me be a little bit more active out on facebook as we approach the fall and winter season to keep you all inspired creating and happy stamping all right bye everyone